Hey girl, hey, happy Monday. I am so happy to be here with you. I haven't done a Maven Monday in a little bit. Life was lifing, but consistency is key, so we're back, and I'm super happy to be here with you. If you don't know me, my name is Olivia Thomas. I'm the founder of Intentional Development Co. and the Busy Girls Brunch, all together, helping you go from hustling to wholeness through brand strategy. And that's what we're talking about today. I think that's what we're always talking about, if I'm honest, but that's what we're talking about today. So I was thinking about a simple brand framework. I think we talk about brands right now. There's there's some ubiquity to the idea of branding. You know, everybody has a personality on social media. Everybody's like out there and everyone's starting businesses left and right. So the word brand is very common which is amazing. It creates a lot of opportunities for people to, you know, take the things that they're good at and, you know, create streams of income doing things that they love, which I personally love. It's more opportunity for growth, more opportunity for employment, more opportunity for money circulating within communities that we actually want to support, which is cool. I think that's great. So I wanted to help you understand a framework that is really simple for when you're just getting started, or even if you want like to do like a little refresh for your brand, nothing too serious. Um, and just kind of like stay on track with what you're doing. So behind me, I was working on a client's, uh, brand refresh. She'd been doing consulting for ever, (laughs) quite literally since she was like 18. Um, But she'd been inside of other people's organizations and, you know, that was, that was her thing. And now she's going out on her own. She's very excited. So instead of starting from scratch, we're starting from the place where we're bringing it all together, creating her messaging and helping people understand that she is the person for them to solve their very specific problems within their organization. And A, I'm very proud of her. And B, this was a really fun project for me. So I'm excited that I got to do it. And big thanks to her for uh, trusting me with her baby, with her brand, with her business. It's always a pleasure. So um, what is branding, right? Again, we hear it so often that it's kind of lost its meaning. It doesn't have a meaning. It's like, I have a brand and we're just like, is it synonymous with having a business? Is it synonymous with like making money? What does it actually mean to have a brand? No, a brand doesn't mean you make money. It just means you're showing up. So here's what a brand actually is. So a brand is your personality, personality, who you are, what you're projecting, your position, your audience, putting yourself in the position where your audience can understand who you are. And then also understanding who you are relative to their needs and also your competition. Now, I'm not super big on talking talking about competition, but in terms of market research, it's good to know who's in the market. It's good to know what's working. It's good to know what's not working and also what other people are not doing. So you can kind of jump in and maybe even fill those gaps. So your personality, your position, your promise. So what at the end of an interaction with you is going to be the transformation that they can expect every time? Or what quality of interaction can they expect? What are they going to be able to expect that when they talk to you, when they work with you, when they give you their money in exchange, they're going to receive this transformation or experience, the promise. And then lastly, your presentation. What does it look like when it's all put together? A lot of people will be like, I need branding. And then they'll go for a logo or they'll start thinking about like letterheads and uh, social media um, templates and all those things like that. Presentation is the last thing that I mentioned because it's really the last thing you should be working on because it's supposed to reflect the personality, the position and the promise and like, almost materialize it so people can understand what it is that they're looking at and really connect with it that way. So your brand, simply put, is your personality, your promise, your position, and your presentation. I mix two of those up in the middle. Your personality, your position, your promise, 
and your presentation. That's what your brand is. It's a guide for how you're supposed to run your business, how you're supposed to show up in the world over and over, and how you're supposed to continue to develop your business. My client asked me like, all right, well, when I have this brand, what next? What does it do, right? What does it do? It's, it's the crux of your communication and it helps you decide what going forward actually looks like and what success really looks like for your business, for your clients, and what a good interaction looks like and what good hiring looks like. Your brand is pretty much everything. Your brand is business, right? When you have a conversation about brand strategy, you are really talking about business strategy from a very foundational place. What does it look like to be me and what comes from me? Me being the company or, you know, the entity that delivers something, not necessarily me, the personal brand, me being the company. I hope that helps. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. Cool. So now let's get into the framework. I just said a lot of things. I just said a lot of things. And if you look on this board behind me, I think there may be like 10 positions that I have like filled out before this whole thing was full with, um, post-its, but we're going through um, edits. So there's a lot. There's a lot that you can do and say when it comes to um, figuring out your brand. And like I said, this is a refining project. This isn't something from the beginning. But in the beginning, what I like to say is you stand in your hand, right? So as a brand, you are wrapping something that people probably already have some idea about. There are very few businesses that are completely unique and if you're first to market that's amazing that is fantastic it's an uphill battle because now you kind of have to prove yourself and that's a conversation for another day but it's it's absolutely amazing to be first to market but this talk in particular isn't necessarily for someone who is first to market this is for someone who's like hey i am a realtor hey i am a mortgage broker hey like my business is something that's already kind of out there. I'm a therapist. People know what this thing is. And there are other people who do it and they have an understanding of it. But how do I stand out from the people who are already there? So what you do is you stand in your hand. So on the other side of your hand is what makes you different. So this can be your mission, right? The, your why, your mission, your why. This can be your unpopular opinion. Or this can be something about your personality on this side, right? But it's really the thing that makes it easy to say like, oh, like I'm a brand consultant, but, well, not but, and, and my work is to uh, bring, why does this always happen? Bring clarity to confusion and hope to fear for business owners so that they can release shame and flourish and grow, right? Creating lives and legacies, right? That's a big and to stand in. But what I can do as a brand consultant who uh, alleviates, who creates a clarity from confusion and brings hope to fear, right? That tells me what kind of content I should be posting. And I can ask myself, does this actually do the things that I say I'm doing? Am I showing up as the person that I say I actually am? Am I actually being uh, true to my messaging and true to my audience and the thing that I said I'm going to do, or am I not, right? Super simple, literally a one line brand standing in your end. So it's your industry, the thing that people um, know, the business part, and then on the other side, either your mission. I love the mission because it is very personally um, inspired. It's something that kind of keeps you going because... When the going gets tough, and it will get tough as you are a business owner, you have to be able to reach back into something that's going to energize you and invigorate you to continue doing the work because you know there's something that you're trying to build on the other side. So there's your mission, and then from your mission, you create a vision. Your vision is what you're trying to create. Your mission is pretty much who you are, right? as a person. I know a lot of people do um, missions, like mission statements. This is what the business does. And they make it lean into the business. And I think that makes sense. 
but I think from a, a founding perspective and trying to create something that's genuine, it helps if the mission itself reflects who you are um, as a person and your personal experiences and what you want to create in the world, pretty much like your calling, right? If it's your calling, it may have different types of iterations um, echoing throughout your existence, right? Maybe today you're a strategist, maybe tomorrow you're building a nonprofit organization, maybe the next day you're uh, helping kids in another country, right? But all of those things can relate to your mission. So it's important to say what your mission is. So you can say, you know, your, your industry and the mission. So you're standing in your and, you're really letting people know what it is that you are, who it is that you are, or another one that I like is the unpopular opinion. So sometimes we are experts in our industry. We have spent so much time there. We spent a lot of time in our industry and we see the gaps. We see the gaps in our industry and we see the places where we can innovate or we can change things and we can do something different that somebody else may not even necessarily be thinking about because they can't see it from their perspective everything's perfect you know it's being done how it's always been done or whatever but there's something that you see and you know i call it the unpopular opinion because generally people may not be ready to accept it or they may think it's too hard to accept it um it's kind of like a calling as well but it's like you see it and you're trying to go forth and make sure that that thing you know is fixed so it's the thing that you see in your industry that you want to fix. It's the gap that you see that you want to fix. So I'm a brand consultant and I focus on wellness, right? So a lot of times if we are, well, I'm a brand consultant. And I think <laughs> while a lot of us are alone in the struggle of building a business and this lone wolf ideology seems like it makes sense we should operate in wellness and community in order to build successful businesses, right? That is a less unpopular opinion these days, which is wonderful, but at a time it was an unpopular opinion. Um, but the more I see black women stepping into um, consulting and business and just everything, the more I'm seeing community being a, a root of everything they're doing. And it's so beautiful like black women, diverse women, women in general, like we are communal and we recognize that um, building together is, is a beautiful thing to do and it takes us farther. Um, so at one point that was an unpopular opinion. There are lots of unpopular opinions you can have about your industry or the way that things are done. Nothing ever has to be done the way that things have been done. Right? We can look at our industry and we can think 10, 20 years into the future and we can start building that. And that can also be our unpopular opinion. It might even not necessarily be that it's unpopular, but maybe people are not thinking there yet. They're not yet ready to explore those things or they're just not thinking far enough. Sometimes people get stuck in the current how, right? The current what and the current how, and they're not thinking of you know, what strategy looks like in 10 or 20 years, which is what we all should be doing, right? So there is your mission and there's your unpopular opinion. And that is a super, super duper simple way to create a one sentence brand. Everything you do hereafter can be measured by that. And that's it. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or you want to know more about branding, Feel free to drop comments. Feel free to ask questions in the group. Um, I want to hear them. I want to be able to answer them. Also, yesterday was my birthday. I'm 33 years old and I am elated. I am very excited um, because it feels like a, a new beginning for me in a lot of ways. Um, and I just feel a different level of freedom, which is really cool. And I want to celebrate with you. So one thing I want to do is I want to work with 10 women to either define or refine or refresh their brand 
um, through a laser session. So I'm sure you've heard of a VIP day. A VIP day is usually like about six hours and you're sitting together and you're working through your stuff. But I want to do a laser session, which is a two hour session that gets the stuff done right? It is very exciting. There's a, a questionnaire to fill out beforehand. And then we sit together and we work out what your brand actually looks like and what what excellence looks like for for you so that you have something to measure your brand by and that you know what you're building in the future moving forward. Um, it also comes with email support afterwards. So even after we're done and you're like, oh my gosh, like I got it while we were talking. I hate when that happens. It's like while you're talking, it's just like, everything seems to be flowing and you have an understanding and you're just like, yeah, and you're energized. But then when you're done, it all flies out of your head. I hate that. And I want to make sure to avoid that at all costs. So there are two months of email support after that. I like email because then you have a record of it. It's written down, right? It's there. It's searchable. You can actually go in and you can get what you need to continue growing your brand. So I'm going to drop that in the comment section. Like I said, only for 10 women. Um, I, I, I want to make this kind of an exclusive thing. Like it's, it's my birthday and I want to celebrate with you. And I think this is a fun way to do it. Um, and it's very important for me to do that. So it is, <laughs> it's about 90% less than what I usually charge. It's it's actually over 90% less than what I usually charge. Um, yeah. So take advantage. Please, please, please take advantage. This is not something I'm going to continue doing at this price after June, after these 10 slots are gone, like this offer is gone, the price is going to go up. Um, Cause you know, this is my business and I have to honor the work that I'm doing and I have to honor the transformation that I am creating for other people. Um, and I have to honor the fact that you're a business owner too. And when we invest in things, we take them seriously. I want you to take your business seriously. I want to make sure that, you know, there's equity between us as well so that everybody gets what they need. So thank you for being here. I hope to see you for the branding laser session and I hope you stand firmly, firmly in your hand. It's what makes you special. You are fantastic. And sometimes I know it's hard to see that because there are other people doing what you're doing and it's just like, oh, but they do it too. You know, bread aisle, right? You go down the bread aisle, there's a million kinds of bread and you know, it's like, oh, why do I, why do I even do this? But they're different brands of bread. They have, they have different value propositions. They, they give something different to the person. Some might be sugar-free. Some might give money to, um, you know, saving the ducks, right? Because ducks and bread, whatever. Like, there's always something else that's different. That's a hook that people, like, want that's going to resonate with them. That's going to make that brand seem like something they want in their lives right? A reflection of who they are as a person, right? So it's not just a transaction that they're looking for, but they're looking for some kind of transformation. And I know bread is like, there's no transformation in bread. You know, there might be something there that makes them feel nostalgic. It might be something there that makes them feel like they're giving their family something good. It might be something that's feeding into some larger mission that makes them feel like, you know, their dollars are going toward, you know, again, saving the ducks, quack, quack. Those are transformations too. And those are the ways we should be thinking when we are building brands. It's not just a money exchange. I'm giving you something, you're giving me something, but there's something here that's connecting to who we are as people. And that's really how you create repeat customers and loyalty is bigger than us. It can be bigger than us if we allow it to be bigger than us. And we dig a little bit deeper and we get to the root and the inspiration that's there. So that's that on that. Happy Monday. I'm super glad you're here. Stay intentional and keep flourishing. I can't wait to talk to you again next week. Bye, ladies.